Thank you very much uh, to give me the opportunity to to talk about Maidan here. So my paper uh, focuses on, on Pardon. Uh, on the role of opposition leaders uh, during uh, um, Euromaidan, and more specifically on the way uh, opposition leaders managed uh, uh, protesters, and notably uh, during evening meetings on, on Independence Square. Uh, by opposition leaders, I, I consider mainly the leaders of the three political uh, uh, parties represented uh, at the parliament, uh, Arseniy Yatsenyuk, Oleg Ternibok, and Vitaly Klitschko. Maidan was an uh, innovative place um, where a lot of things were tested, uh, new ways of living, of thinking, of behaving. And uh, uh, my uh, question is uh, if uh, Maidan tested new ways of doing politics. And this question is based on my own observation of, of the protest at the end of, uh, of, of January after violent uh, clashes took place on, on Grushevsky Street. At this time, opposition leaders uh, were facing mistrust from the protesters and had to find a way to legitimize their political involvement in the protest, but also their political involvement uh, in the negotiation process with the president. There was a high way, uh, level of uh, unpredictability, and I think that this time they changed their way of addressing the crowd uh, in Maidan. Um, and they faced what uh, I call two main challenges. The first challenge, it was to unify Maidan. How to unify Maidan, and the second way, maybe how to personalize Maidan. The first way, uh, the first challenge, unifying Maidan, uh, they, they, they were facing multiple groups and sets of actions, so they had uh, like to unify the protest by using different uh, means of actions. The first one may be uh, the, the, the way how they centralize the decision and the claims. Uh, first of all, they created different organizations, such as the headquarter of national resistance, after they created the council of all Ukrainian Union Maidan, and all the structures they created uh, consisted mainly of opposition uh, MPs. Uh, second, uh, I think that opposition leaders used the same organizational and technical tools as during the Orange Revolution. Even, of, of course, Euromaidan has its own patterns, the stage, the screens, evening meetings, uh, as the main way for opposition leaders to address protesters. Uh, and because, the, comparing to the Orange Revolution, uh, they did not control the agenda of the protests, and because the protest movement was lasting longer, they had to adjust, to adjust regularly the use uh, of, of these tools. But the stage uh, created a kind of a central venue and a center of command from which initiative decisions uh, uh, were uh, dispatched. So, uh, with the stage, opposition leaders uh, tried to share claims with protesters, to harmonize the claims, and to, uh, um, to uh, validate them by, by, by the crowd. So, that was one, one, one way like, to, to unify Maidan. The second way to unify was space, what I call space integration, how to control Maidan as a territory. And here again, um, uh, after January 19th, and what we call the Grushevsky as a phenomenon, um, opposition uh, um, uh, leaders uh, were, as majority of protesters, in favor of peaceful action. So what, what, what we can do with, with Grushevsky, and what was decided on January 24th, is to, us to integrate Grushevsky as a part of the territory of Maidan and actually also to expand the territory of Maidan. This decision was a way for opposition leaders to legitimize their role, since they were criticized for lack of actions, and uh, also because they failed 
to control the violence on the ground, and, uh, and we have different kind of examples of how Klitschko or even uh, Yatsenyuk went on Grushevsky trying to 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 uh, to to control the the, the violence uh, uh, on this uh, on this uh, on this side. Another way to control Maidan as a territory was the control of administrative buildings and the, the municipality of Kiev controlled by the, the party, uh, the party Svoboda. But another way, another challenge uh, uh, facing by the, the opposition leaders was not only unifying Maidan, but was also personalizing Maidan. Beside being the core of the movement uh, and a territory, Maidan was, of course, above all, a uh, human community. And uh, opposition leaders were also willing to, to shape Maidan as a collective body that might act uh, as a disciplined uh, community, but, but also as a, as a political actor. Uh, and uh, they uh, used uh, mainly two different tools to, to do that. First one, uh, they were trying to share this decision making uh, uh, and responsibility with protesters. And second, they were uh, um, trying to discipline behaviors uh, on Maidan. Since mid-January, uh, opposition leaders did not act. I mean, mid-January after uh, the, the anti-protest law was uh, uh, were adopted uh, uh, at the parliament. Opposition leaders did not act only as MPs. Uh, but also as representatives of, of the Ukrainian people that Maidan represented. They created again new structures like popular council, uh, a popular government uh, as a shadow cabinet for defending the interests of the Ukrainian people. And uh, of course, uh, at this time, evening meetings uh, became decisive. Uh, the stage usually implied a face-to-face -face configuration where speakers uh, dominate the audience. Protesters are expected to be passive or at most reactive, but very rarely involved in the decision-making process. After what happened uh, uh, at, uh, uh, at Grushevsky, and because of the level of uh, unpredictability, unpredictability uh, Opposition leaders shared decision-making with protesters. And for a very short time, uh, a very uh, short period of time, I think that maybe Maidan became a political agora. Uh, and it, was, uh, it can be illustrated by what happened during uh, Tierney uh, speech on January 24th. After listening for about 10 minutes, protesters booed Tierney who, uh, who was trying to summarize the difficulties of negotiation with Yanukovych. And what he decided to do, he decided to whistle with the crowd and like to, to share a kind of discontent uh, with protesters. But what happened next uh, is like he, he asked later uh, uh, the protester to take a decision by improvising a vote on Maidan. It gave protesters two options, allow opposition leaders to follow the negotiations or carry on the fight against the regime. Protesters chose the second option. And Ternibok finished his speech calling for the crowd to go, to go on and, uh, and fight. The decision taken by Maidan uh, um, this evening did not prevent opposition leaders for following negotiations the next day with Yanukovych, actually. Uh, the main point of those negotiations, probably you remember, was the proposition made the by the president to Yatsenyuk and Klitschko to form a new government. So when opposition leaders came back the next day on Maidan, uh, they explained their refusal and Yatsenyuk justified this position by recalling the mandate given the day before. And he addressed the crowd this way. You know why Yanukovych is discussing with us? It's because you are here. In fact, you are discussing with Yanukovych because we are only your middleman. So opposition leaders tried to gain their legitimacy from the protesters 
and at this time also wanted to share with them their political responsibility. Uh, opposition leaders represented Maidan not only as a crowd of protesters, but at this time as a political decision maker. Another way uh, to personalize Maidan was also to insist on discipline and cohesion, and especially again after a Grushevsky event. On January 24th, uh, discussing after the, the vote he improvised, Tchernibu told the crowd that discipline was the only condition to pursue the fight against the regime, and he mentioned a united army at this time. Yatsenyuk also uh, asked for a quick respect of orders, uh, which was a way to avoid decent multiple decision making regarding contentious uh, actions on Maidan. So the specific, I think that this specific uh, moment at the, at the end of, of, of January um, uh, is re revealing like the, the, the question of the, the relationships between opposition leaders and protesters at this time. We might uh, have taken another example, like the end of February when a new government was formed, for example. I think that after the, after the end of February, a new process began regarding uh, Maidan. And we might call the, this process the objectification of Maidan, with uh, like two distinct paths that uh, we can trace until today. Uh, the way Maidan became a political slogan and the way Maidan is actually now memorialized. So, but that might be the, the subject of, a, of another study. Thank you for your attention.